I, Elder Shadaniah, and Elder Aharon ben Israel have some very interesting topics here today for you, uh, listening audience. Um, we're about to go into Shaul, or some say Paul. And what we want to do, first of all, is we want to ID this man called Paul. For I know and I realize, and I know you do also, Elder, mm -hmm. realize much of Scripture that is, or the Bible that is discussed, is centered around Paul. Many Christians adhere to this Paul and adhere to the writings of his letters because Paul presents a lot of information. Hmm. And I believe that most people or most of Christendom, actually basically all of Christendom, mm -hmm. identifies with Paul because he is designated and has been designated as a liaison mm. initially between the Father his word and Gentiles hmm. and Christians review or view themselves as Gentiles hmm. and then they see Jews let's ID show uh, elder. let's uh, first of all being honest grab a hold of your Bibles and and turn to the book of Acts and let's go immediately to the 13th chapter of, of Acts. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to look at right here is we're going to look at the ninth verse, I believe it is the ninth verse, mm -hmm. of Acts. And let's ID who Paul is. It says, Then Shaul or Saul, Shaul is Hebrew, mm -hmm. for the English Saul. It says, then Shaul, who also is called Paul. <laughs> All right, now, mm -hmm. let's address that for one second, Elder. Mm -hmm. First of all, viewing audience, keep this in mind, that before the 13th chapter and the 9th verse, you saw the word Shaul or the name Shaul. But from this point forward, you will see Paul. Yes. All it says here at this point <clears throat> is, <clears throat> then Saul or Shaul, who is also called Paul. Hmm. Now that doesn't that does not qualify, in my mind, <clears throat> a changing of his name. No, it doesn't. In the first place, listening audience, or viewing audience, understand this, that it was the Gentiles, specifically the Romans, that called him Paul. Hmm. What does... Paul mean? You know, does, does Paul have a meaning? I mean, does the name Paul have a meaning? Shorty. What does it come again, Elder? Shorty. Shorty. Paulus. <laughs> Paulus <laughs> means shorty? Yes, it does. Hmm. Okay, do my, now, now correct me if I'm wrong, Elder. The name Paul, or should I say Shaul mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. or Saul, means one asked for. So it would not make any sense for Shaul's name, which means one asked for, to be changed to Paul, which means shorty. No, it doesn't. Shorty absolutely has no value. No, it does. But one asked for it does have value. Yes, it does. That, that makes sense to me. Yes, it does. So in actuality, bottom line here, viewing audience, 
Paul is a man whose name is actually Shaul or Saul. Yes, it is. All right. Let's establish his credentials, Elder. Um, viewing all this, turn your, your, your Bibles over to the, I believe it's the ninth chapter of the same book of Acts. Mm -hmm. You got to go backwards to go forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, here we're going to try to establish the credentials of Shaul and look at some things that are key and critical to his placement. Mm -hmm. The topic here is the Damascus Road. Mm -hmm. And then it says, Shaul converted. Yes, it does. It says, then Shaul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of Yah, mm -hmm. went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were on the, of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Stop uh, for a sec. Okay. Are you, are you saying that this show mm -hmm. went and got letters mm -hmm. from the f hierarchy mm -hmm. of the Jerusalem Pharisees? Mm -hmm to bring in people mm -hmm. who follow Yahshua? Absolutely. It looks like he was uh, an, an unbeliever. Ex absolutely. An unbeliever who was a part of an organization. Yes, he was part of the Sanhedrin. Absolutely. Yes, he was. He was a Pharisee. Yes, he was. And he was a part of an organization that was anti-Christ, so, or anti-Yeshua, so to speak. That's right. Against the gospel. Yes, yes. And he was law-based. Yes, he was. Very much Yes. law-based. In yes. fact, only law-based. Yes. So he was a rejecter of the Mashiach, yes. Messiah, and he was an acceptor of the law. Yes, he was. And he was totally against anyone who believes in the Mashiach. That's right. I mean, to the point of bashing, yes. killing, fighting, beating. Yes. Okay. It says, as he, as Shaul journeyed, he came near Damascus, mm -hmm. and suddenly a light shone around, or from around him, mm -hmm. or from heaven. Mm -hmm. It says, then he, Shaul, fell, to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Shaul, Shaul. My Bible says Shaul. Yes, mine does too. It says, why are you persecuting me? Huh. Now, we know, everybody knows, that since this is in red, and most of your Bibles should be in red, mm -hmm. we know that this is or these are the words of the Mashiach. Right. These are the words of Yeshua. Yes. And he is trying to get Shaul's attention. Yes, he is. Because Shaul is persecuting, persecuting him. him. Yes, he is. And Shaul said in five, and Shaul said, Who are you? It says, Lord. Question mark or master? Yes. Question mark. Mm -hmm. Then Yeshua said, or then said your Bible say, then the Lord said, mm -hmm. I am Yeshua. Mm -hmm. No. No. It says I am Jesus. Uh -huh. Ah. <clears throat> it does say Jesus in this Bible. It says right. Jesus in most Bibles. Right. <clears throat> but we know, of course. That's right. That he didn't say Jesus. Right. He couldn't. Have. Because Jesus is in English. That's right. But it's founded in Greek. Yes. But it says, I am Yeshua, whom you are persecuting. Yes. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Mm -hmm. Six. 
So he, trembling and astonished, said, so Shaul said, mm -hmm. Lord, what do you want me to do? Hmm. Then Yeshua said, or then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Hmm. So he was just giving, giving an instruction. Yes, he was. Okay. Verse 7, it says, And the men who journeyed with Shaul mm -hmm. stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Huh. Then Shaul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him to, into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor did he drink. Huh. So at this point, we see that when Yeshua announced himself, so to speak, to Shaul, in the way that he did, he caused a blindness to fall over Shaul. Yes, he did. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. Mm -hmm. And to him, Yah said, or Yeshua said, in a vision, Ananias. Mm -hmm. And he said, here am I, Lord. Mm -hmm. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, Straight Street, mm -hmm. and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Shaul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. For this is the this is the place where Shaul was from, mm -hmm. Tarsus, yes, right. of Rome. Right. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias, coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Verse 13, it says, Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man. How much harm has he done to your saints in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. And here he has authority from the chief priest to, blind, to bind all who call on your name. Yes. Hmm. But Yeshua said to him, <clears throat> Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. Shaul now has been established yes. as Yeshua's chosen. He has been anointed. Absolutely. <laughs> he is special. Yes, he is. Because Yeshua has chose him. That's right. So his credentials are formidable. Yes. But continue to read that. Go, go ahead and start again and okay. read that. It says, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name. Listen at that. To bear my name. Yeah. Very important. <laughs> to bear my name, which is what, Elder? Yahshua. Yahshua. I assure you, viewing audience, hmm. that it is not, nor was it, Jesus. Right. The name Jesus did not exist 2,000 years ago, nor did the language English exist 2,000 years ago. Hmm. To bear my name before the Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Huh. So not only was Shaul That's right. to go to the Gentiles, yes. for the most part, yes, mm -hmm. but to kings and to the children of Israel. That's right. He was to be there for his brethren That's right. as well. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Listen at that. My name's sake. Elder, you huh. always talk about, yeah. always talk about names. Yeah. And how important the name is. That's very important. Yes, it is. You see, and we, we, we get on this thing about God is a God of the heart. 
<laughs> he knows who we're talking about. He, no. And, no. If you read this book in its entirety, from cover to cover, uh -huh. it's about the father's name and the son's name. Absolutely. 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 That's what it's about. Absolutely. If you get nothing else out of this. Absolutely. You got the jest right there. Absolutely. But I, I'm finding that they rebel against it. Oh, yeah. They, they totally oh. rebel. Oh. But not only those of today, but you must remember that they rebelled against the Father's name in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Huh? Most definitely. Give us a king mm -hmm. like the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And broke y'all's heart. Yes, they did. Absolutely. Yes, they did. Sure did. Absolutely. But we don't know that. We we ain't, we don't read it. That's the old. Hey, that's uh, very. That's the old uh, testament. Oh, we can. But we but, but we we're, we're, we're just a little old. We're just a little old people. We're just little humans. We don't. We we, we can't, can't break, break the father's heart. Oh, no. we can't do that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's further ID this Shaul. Okay. Well, Paul. Let's go to uh, Romans, the 11th chapter. Let's get down to some specifics as far as who Shaul is. Mm -hmm. The letter of Romans, or the epistle of Romans, mm -hmm. let's look at chapter 11, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Topic here is Israel's rejection it says not total. And we're just going to go hit the first verse here. Mm -hmm. Shaul is the writer. And he says here in 11.1, 1, he says, I say then, has Yah cast away his people, hmm. referring to Israel? Mm -hmm. Certainly not. For I, Shaul, mm -hmm. am what? Israelite. An Israelite. So now we know that Shaul is an Israelite. Yes, he is. Like we found out earlier in Acts. Mm -hmm. He is an Israelite. Then it says, of the seed of Abraham, mm -hmm. of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. So of the 12 tribes of Jacob or Jacob or Israel. That's right. Shaul, or Paul, was a descendant of Benjamin. That's right. Or Benjamin. Benjamin. That's right. Okay. Now, let's go to 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. Romans 1, verse 1. From Romans 11 to 1, we'll go to Romans 1-1. One, one. Who also, his namesake, mm -hmm. was a Benjamite. Absolutely. The first king of... Yesterday. Absolutely. Shaul. That's right. That's right. But, Shaul. But they don't, hey, that, you know, that's uh -huh. Old Testament. You know, uh, they, 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 they don't. <laughs> okay. Romans, first chapter, first mm -hmm. verse. It says, Shaul, or Paul, mm -hmm. a bondservant of Yeshua, called to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. We see. Shaul mm -hmm. is an apostle now. Okay, what does apostle mean? Does the apostle have a meaning to it? What is an apostle? What you think of an apostle? Let the viewer and audience think. They, they understand what a disciple is. Oh, mm -hmm. no. They don't understand that a disciple is a student. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. But an and apostle we, is, is what? One who teaches. Absolutely, but, he, but the de definition the, of apostle, the audience, is one who is sent out. That's right. Okay, one, one who, who is, is sent, sent out, because at one time he actually was a disciple. Right. Now, let's, let's stop right there, mm -hmm. because just as Yahshua sent the one others follow. out, mm -hmm. they were disciples, he sent them out. They became apostles. Mm -hmm. He sent Shaul out. Absolutely. And he became an, an apostle. apostle. Absolutely. That's right. So we see Shaul is now, now. an apostle. apostle. Yes. So Shaul went from being a Pharisee. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. A law-based individual. Yes. 
to becoming an apostle, right. one who is to be set out yes, right. to the Gentiles yes. by Yeshua. Right. Okay. To teach the gospel. Okay. Now let's go to 11, back to 11, where we just came from, and we'll go back to 11, but we'll look at the 13th verse now. Mm -hmm. So we went from 11 1 being audience mm -hmm. to 1 1, and now we're going to go to 11 13. Shaul says here in the 13th verse of the 11th chapter, he says, For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. Yes. Okay. All right. So we've established that. Mm -hmm. We see that Shaul or Paul is an apostle to the Gentiles mm -hmm. who is a writer of letters. Mm-hmm. And there's a liaison between the Father, Yeshua, mm -hmm. faith, and Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Okay. For a long time, for a long time, a lot of people, Christians, have read, have discussed, and stated many things and concerning many issues on Paul. I've come to understand this, Elder, that, that the most difficult man to read or the most difficult information in this Bible to understand are the writings of Shaul. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. But before you go there, hold that thought. Mm -hmm. Because back in Acts, the 24th chapter, uh -huh. when Shaul was on trial, mm -hmm. he said something very interesting. Absolutely. In fact, you, uh, <laughs> I was just about to go there. Oh, okay. But, 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 but let, and, I, and I'm going to let you read it, Elder, mm -hmm. but let me set it up for you. Okay, go right ahead. Viewing audience. Mm. For those who have been thinking for a long time that Shaul did not obey the law, if you heard some of the statements that Elder made earlier <clears throat> in the program, if you didn't believe what he said or understand that Shaul followed all of the customs of the law and believed in these, and many of you out there have expressed in many different ways, in many different times, have expressed things that reflect the idea or the notion that you really don't believe that Paul or Shaul really obeyed this law. Hmm. Because you read things like, and you hear statements like Elder, like, I'm not under the law, or you're not, not under, under the, the law. law. Yeah. Christ died, and when he died, the, the law was nailed to the cross. Yeah. <laughs> for, it is, it is, it is, for a man is not justified by, by the law, but is justified by faith. Mm. And you hear these things over and over and over and over again. People repeating <laughs> things that they've read that Paul wrote, and they think that they understand what the gentleman is talking about, when in fact, they don't understand even what they believe, no, they because they really don't understand Paul. And I'm saying that, and I'll say that for a long time to come until I see different, that most of the people out there in Christendom, most Christians, simply do not understand Paul. You think that he didn't follow this law. You think that he didn't obey this law. You think that he didn't believe in this law. Let's find out what he really, really believed. Okay, all This is Acts, Acts 24, verse 14. Acts 24. 
And this is Shaul's defense uh -huh. before Felix. And I believe in verse 10 it says, yeah. then Paul. So we know we're right. talking about Shaul here yeah. or Paul. I'm go there first. Okay. We're going to read verse 10 so that you'll know who this is. Absolutely. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered. Listen to this. Uh -huh. And as much as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, uh -huh. I do the more cheerfully answer for myself so that you know that this is uh -huh. Paul talking. Uh -huh. Let's skip down to verse 14. Absolutely. He says, but this I confess to you. Confession, huh, Elder? Huh? Confession. Right. Okay. He's confessing this. Mm -hmm. He's standing on this. Okay. In other words, this Absolutely. is what he's saying. Okay. That according to the way which they call a set, mm -hmm. so I worship the Elohim of my fathers. The God of my fathers, your That's Bible right. says. It says that he worshiped the God of his my, fathers. That's right. Believing all things which are written in the law, Mm. And in the prophets. Oh. Some things, Elder. No. It says all. It says that Shaul actually believed in all things which are written in the law no. and in the prophets. All things. That's very interesting. And I know that many of you have never read that before. I know that some of you have. But that's interesting because Shaul or Paul says that he believed in all the things that are written in the law and the prophets. He confesses to this. So, looking at what he just stated here, Elder, yeah. and looking at the viewing audience's interpretation or interpretations <laughs> of what Paul writes about, the law has been done away with, we don't have to observe the law, the law's been nailed to the cross. We're not under the law. In looking at these things, there's something wrong if you think that he's putting this law down and he's not, and he's telling you not to follow it. That's right. It's either that or what? Shaul is a hypocrite? No. So does Shaul say in one breath that he believes in this law of Moshe and the prophets? He, he observes this law of Moshe and the prophets. In one breath, is he saying that? And in the other breath, in his letters, is he saying that we're, we don't have to respond to these issues? <laughs> we don't have to obey this law? Is he doing that, Elder? No, he's I not. I don't think so either. That. If you have any faith in Shaul, I don't think that you're going to even have enough nerve to say, yeah, he was a hypocrite, in that he said one thing and he, he did, did another. Something else, so you no. better. St so you know what that tells me? And you know what that tells me, Elder? That tells me that most of the people out there in the viewing audience is going to have to do a little bit more studying. Yes, it is. And yes, put a little are. bit more time in the book, <laughs> or go to the people who, who you don't think have the answers. That's right. And I ain't gonna say no more than that. <laughs> surely I believe, and surely we believe, Elder, that Shaul is not was not, not ever a hypocrite. hypocrite. No, he's not. It, he and, 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 th and this is the very reason, Elder, why I made the statement, that Shaul and his writings present a challenge to most people to the extent that it is very difficult to yeah. understand what Shaul is talking about right. when he writes in these letters. Yes. What, did, what did Shimon Kiefer, what did... Peter, Peter or Simon Peter That's say he, about Paul. He said Paul's writings were hard to understand. Did when he people not? People rest and turn to their own destruction. An unlearned, unlearned person, person. Yes. will take the issues of Paul yes. and turn them and twist them to their own destruction. Yes. Now, now it's something about that. Obviously, Peter didn't say that for no reason. No. I mean, there's a reason why Peter yeah, said that. He understood. Because he understood that Paul's writings are difficult to understand. understand. Yeah. So I'm simply what, echoing, simply off of what Shimon Kiefer or Simon Peter. That's right. Simply stated in his letter. 
to our forefathers. That's all I'm doing. I'm simply saying what he said. I'm simply repeating what he said. That's what the book says. Yes. That's it. But they don't believe that. Absolutely. No. They, they, they believe what the preachers say. Absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That's their master. Who, Shaul? No. Oh, no, the uh, preacher. <laughs> well, you know, first is, first, first is Shaul, and then is the preacher. No. Because, because I find a lot of what they think Shaul says, which <laughs> seems to be, seems to be contrary to what Yeshua says, many people believe that. They believe that what? That, that Shaul is saying something different. Yeah, Shaul is never at one point ever saying anything different or right. other than what, what Yeshua is saying. Right, but who telling them that? The ministry is. All right, unfortunately. Yeah, all right, yeah. Then, so. yeah, you know, we you know, we have waywards everywhere. <laughs> so what I would like to do, Elder, is um, let's let's go back to uh, let's go back to uh, Romans. Let's look at the first chapter, and we, again, we're just going to read just that one one what we just read. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over some things here, and I'd like to touch on some things, Elder, that, that uh, are often misunderstood. We talk about these things, and we talk about how Paul is misinterpreted, mm -hmm. uh, being misinterpreted. And, 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 and we talk about all these things. Let's give some examples. Okay. I'd like to touch on some examples and try to educate our people to understand what he really meant and what he was really trying to say. Okay. Okay. Now, well, first of all, mm -hmm. you got to understand who Shaul was talking to. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you must understand so it's always important to understand the who yeah. the what the where the, the when and, and the, the why what. whenever we read these letters or for that matter the, the entire scriptures right we have to understand and, and and that's and that's a very good idea uh, uh viewing audience when you are uh in the process of studying it's always good to ask who is speaking and to whom are they speaking to? Yes. What are they saying? When is this information being said? And what time frame is this information being said? Right. And yeah. what's going on? These questions have to be asked. If they're asked, and if you key in on, this, on, on these things, when you do your study, it will help you understand more about what was what right. really was right you know see because there are a lot of factors that you have to take into consideration absolutely we read earlier where Shaul did what he had letters uh -huh. to do what uh -huh. to capture people absolutely who did what who believed in mm -hmm. the message of Yahshua and Yahshua himself mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So now he's made a 180 degree turn. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact he's going to someone mm -hmm. who knows nothing. Absolutely. And, 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 and I'm about to say something, viewing audience, something that I'm sure that most of you have never heard before. But because I'm about to say this, I believe in my heart that if you take what I'm saying to you right now and you pay close attention to what I'm saying, it's going to assist you very much in understanding Shaul. Paul was once a Pharisee. Hmm. Is that right, Elder? Correct. Being once a Pharisee, Paul relied on the law. Yes. yes Paul, being a Pharisee, mm -hmm. 
and relying on the law was a rejecter of Yeshua, a rejecter of Christ, a rejecter of the Mashiach. Yes, he was. So here you have on one on, on your left side, you have Israel, who is basically law based, who basically resisted Yeshua. Who basically was against Yeshua. Yes. Paul was once a part of that system. Yes, he was. The bad guy, the bad people right here. Yes. Paul was converted. Yes, he was. Yeshua converted. Shaul or Paul. When he converted him, then that meant we now take Shaul from this side and we place him on this side. Yes. <laughs> this side here are those that are believers. Yes. This side here are those that accept Yeshua. This side here are those that follow the law, that observe the law, mm -hmm. but are not under the curse, curse of, of the, the law. law. Correct. Which means they do not rely on the law because they realize and understand that the law is not their righteousness, nor can the law save them from anything. No. But it is only this new faith or this faith that is a new righteousness from the Father, okay, this is what they know and they realize. Right. So they are not law-based. They are not law-reliant. No, they not. are Yeshua-reliant. Yes. But we have a group here, and we have a group here, right. and they are the total opposite of one another. Yes, Rejectors, acceptors. Shaul is now an acceptor. Who is placed in the middle of this conflict? We have the Gentile yes. who the Father has just poured his spirit out yes. onto this Gentile, onto this people, onto all nations. The Father has just poured out his spirit. And we have the Gentile who was a baby in the word who know nothing of who Yeshua is, who know nothing about salvation. But it is to be given to them by the ones on this side. Right. But we got one problem, Melda. Yeah. And the problem is, is that we've got this side standing in the way because they're reaching and they're grabbing and they're trying to pull this Gentile over to their side. Yeah. Yes. This group is reaching and they're grabbing this same Gentile who the Father has just poured out his spirit and they're trying to pull him onto their side. That's right. So now we've got, looks like we've got a tug of war, Elder. Yes, we've we got do. a tug of war between two groups that are total opposite of one another. Yes. That was the reason why Shaul was sent in the first place. Absolutely. Out. And here's the key. <laughs> Shaul knew that if this group get their hands on this new individual, this Gentile, and pull them to their side, that person is going to be damned. Yes, he will. Because he's going to be a reliant, he's going to be reliant on the law. He's going to fall under the curse of the law, and he's going to be a rejecter of Yeshua HaMashiach. Right. And he is eternally, he's going to be eternally damned. So, when I look and I see the writings of Shaul, I see Shaul writing various letters, Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians, etc., etc., etc. I see Shaul writing in his letters in his own way, 
He's writing, and this is his own way of doing battle and talking against this group of people. Right. Because it is his way. This, these letters are his tools or his weapons of war against this group of people. Yeah. Because that's why he talks about the law. And he's, oftentimes he sounds so negative about the law because he does not want this new individual, this Gentile, who's just coming into the word. He does not want him to even lend an ear to what this group has to say because he knows if he slips, he's going to be lost. Right. He knows that he's going to have to learn that faith, that righteousness comes now through faith and not the law. Right. I believe that Shaul understood this. He understood that if he could bring this Gentile or this new person where the Father had just poured out his spirit, if he could bring this Gentile to Yeshua, then Yeshua could then bring this Gentile to the law. That's right. To understand, the to obey, the correctness of, of it, and That's not right. to take it out of context. Right. That's why, Elder, James talks so very much about law, works, yeah. and faith. Yeah. And he talked about it in such a way That's that right. you had to understand that they are both so much intertwine and so much a part of one another and they're but what two sides of the same, same coin time. and that you cannot separate, separate them. them you can't you cannot being honest you cannot separate the law works and faith because they both go hand, hand in hand. hand this is the message of james yes. and that's why he said that that the, just like the body right without the, the spirit, spirit is dead he said that works Without faith, and faith without works is dead. That's and that right. is so true. You cannot separate them. Right. And this is what they're going to have to understand. The people are going to have to understand in just two words, and which you know, Elder, that I always teach, <laughs> that faith is the way by which we obtain our salvation. And the works and the law is a way by which we maintain our salvation. Yeah. So one is obtained and the other is maintained. maintained. And for those who don't believe that you can be lost once you think that you're quote unquote saved, go to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter, and it talks about that. Right. So but just to just to put a, a little footnote on what you were saying yes. about the Pharisees, they taught Tradition. Tradition. Law. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this <did>. man, Christ, <laughs> this man, Yeshua, who is he? He's nothing. Yeah. Sacrilege. Yeah. <laughs> and here you have a problem. baby in the word. Yes. Hearing what they're saying yes. is going to be lost. Yes. And Paul knew that he had to say whatever he, he had to say what he had he to, to say. say. That's right. Even mm -hmm. though it sounded like it was anti-law, against the law, yeah. but he only did that because these people were law-based and they relied on the law. Right. And he did not want these Gentiles to get hung up in this law. Right. That'll come later. Right. That'll come later. First things first, Elder. First things first. Understand, faith in Yeshua is yeah. first. Yeah. Now, after you receive that faith. Now, after you receive that faith. Now let's talk about uh, obeying the, the law. law. Right. Now, but yeah. there's an order about it. Yeah. Let, let's go right here to, I'm, I'm going to go right to, right to Romans, the second chapter. I'm going directly to the 12th verse of the second chapter of Romans. Mm -hmm. Right ahead. <laughs> it says, for as many as have sinned without law will perish without law. Yeah. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. Verse yeah. 13, listen to this, Elder. This is so very important. Yeah. 
Viewing audience, listen to this. It says, for not the hearers of the law are justified in the sight of Yah, but the doers of the law are justified. Wait a second. Shaul is saying that the doers of the law are justified. justified. Right. <laughs> okay, but I thought that I thought that the law, I mean, I thought that, well, I thought that the law couldn't justify you. But we know that it, it really can. It can't. It can't. No. So is Paul, is Paul being controversial here? No. Is Paul, is, is Paul saying something out of order here? He said, he just said, but the doers of the law will be justified. <laughs> but you how, 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 how do we know that, 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 that Paul's not, he's not talking backwards here? Okay, let's look it over here. Let's go to the third chapter of Romans. And let's look at the 28th verse, Elder. This seems to be a flip side of what we just read. It seems to be a contradiction to what we just read. It says, 28, Therefore, we conclude, is that right, Elder? Yes. That a man is Justified, oops, there, there's word again, uh -huh. that a man is justified by what? By faith. faith. Uh-oh, it didn't say it by law, did it? No. It said he's justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. law. Wait a right. second, now. That sounds like that's yeah. awful contradicting to me. Yes, it does. That sounds like that's contradicting. <laughs> Here on one breath he's saying that a man is justified by faith yeah. apart from the deeds of the law. The right. deeds of the law that's doing the law, right? Right. Over here, 2.13 says, For not the hearers of the law are justified in the sight of Yah, but the doers of the law. Oh. That sounds, oh, it's, come on, Elder, that's got to be contradiction. Absolutely. But but sounds yes, like a contradiction. Sound, right. Let's straighten it out for the people. Yeah. Verse 28 yeah. is true. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds Still of the law. law. Right. A man is justified by this new righteousness that Yah has given us, which is Yeshua, right. which is faith, right. and it has nothing to do with the law, with the law no, or with the deeds right. of the law. That's right. Now, what does Shaul mean when he says over here in 13, for not the hearers of the law are, are just in the sight of Yah, but the doers of the law. Right. Okay. That is true. But what he's saying here is, for those that are believers in Yeshua, sure. but at the same time doers of the law. Right. In other words, you have to understand that in this very verse, there is something to be understood here. Yes, and that is. understood is you have to automatically understand that Paul here is referring to one who is a believer. believer. Yes. Not a non-believer. Right. Because you know that a non-believer is not justified. No. And he's a, what, a doer, doer of the law? law? He has to be a believer and be a what? Doer. doer. Obedient. So... <laughs> Faith is understood yeah. in this verse. Yeah. But if you don't know that, you're going to mm, be confused, confused as heck. Yes, yeah. You're going to be very confused, <laughs> but that's what he means, folks. Yeah. <laughs> he means one who is a believer, but at the same time, one who is a doer yeah. of the law. Oh. Because he was a doer yeah. of the law. Oh. And he was a believer, believer. because he was converted. converted. Yes. <laughs> it's simple yeah. when you understand it. <laughs> they don't understand. <laughs> they don't get it. They don't get it though. How do we how do we know that this this, this faith is a righteousness? This is a new righteousness. Let's look at three, Romans three. Go back to Romans three and we'll go to uh I believe it's twenty uh twenty one. The twenty one. Yes. Okay. It All says, right. but now the righteousness of Yah, apart from the law, is mm -hmm. revealed, mm -hmm. being witnessed by the law and the prophets. prophets yes. Uh-huh. Being witnessed by the law and the right. prophets, 
uh -huh. being witnessed by the law and the, and the prophets, prophets, which means right. that the law and the prophets knew about, about it. it. In yeah. fact, they did more than just know about it. They wrote about, about it. it. And who was this it that we're referring to, Elder? Yeshua. Absolutely. Yeshua. <laughs> being honest, Yeshua. Before I not, I, then I come to what? Destroy the, the law, law and the prophets? <laughs> prophets. Okay. I came to establish it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It says, even the righteousness, righteousness of Yah through indeed. faith in Yah, yes, sure, sure. Yes, to right. all and all who on who believe. believe. For there is no difference, difference. for all have sinned mm -hmm. and fall That's short sure. of the glory yeah, of Yah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's remain in Romans here. And let's go over to uh, the, seventh, the seventh chapter. And I want to begin with... Uh, uh, should we go to one? Okay, let's go over to, I believe it's, uh, verse four. Okay. It says, well, the topic here is freed, freed from the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is right away confusing. Freed from the law. That's confusing. That's what my Bible says here. I don't right. know if you're your yeah, topic, your topic. Says the topic. Freed thing. from the law. Okay, don't let that trip you. It's not no. saying that... <laughs> You're actually freed from it. No. They're saying something else. As if the law was something bad or negative. Okay. Verse 4. It says, Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law. Dead to the law. Sounds confusing already. Dead to the law through the body of Yeshua, mm -hmm. that you may be married to another. Mm -hmm. What does dead to the law mean, Elder? It simply means what we just read. Yes, it does. That no, no longer, longer does the law stand for your righteousness because at one time before Yeshua came on the scene, Israel had a righteousness, and this righteousness was the oh. law. When Yeshua came on the scene, Elder, Yeshua then became that righteousness. righteousness. For yes. did not the law bring, or was not the law a shadow of what was to come? Yes, it, yes, was. it was. So what that is saying is simply this. You're dead to the law in this sense, in that the law is not here to save you, nor can it save you, no, it nor can't. is it your righteousness anymore, no. but Yeshua faith is your righteousness, righteousness now right but it does not mean that you don't have to observe it and that the law itself is dead that's right you still must it's be only obedient absolutely <laughs> absolutely keep that in mind again big audience. <laughs> you must be obedient i'm just gonna zip through here and hit on some things that that people uh get all confused about uh uh, let's look at Romans 9 and 14. Mm -hmm. 9 and 14. The topic here is Israel's rejection and Yah's justice. Right. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with Yah? No. Certainly not. For he says to Moshe, I have mercy with on whomever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him who wills or him who runs, but of Yah who shows mercy. mercy yeah. You see, Paul here is obviously making these statements here to poke at the group on this side. Right. Hey, the Father will show mercy on who he shows mercy on. Right. The Father will show mercy on this Gentile if he wants to show mercy on him. Who are you to say he's still uncircumcised? Who are you to say yeah. he's still unclean? Yeah. Who are you to say he's nothing? Right. Who are you to call him common, Elder, right. well, when the Father has established that, him as not common? That's right. He's poking at, he's poking at this group all the time well, yes, in his letters. Yes, and is. it sounds so very much like he's poking at the law. Uh, but, but he's but not. not. He's poking at the ones who wield this law. law. That's right, because they're willing it unrighteously. There you go. And they're making it yeah, and causing it to be a curse because right. they're relying on it. Yes. 
and here. not it itself but traditions that they have made absolutely. from it. Absolutely. That's the problem. Absolutely. And right here, it says, and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion. So then it is not of him who wills or him who runs, but of Yah who shows mercy. Mm -hmm. For the scripture says to the Pharaoh, Pharaoh, for this purpose, very purpose, I have raised you up, Israel, yeah. then as well as when he what? poured out his spirit Israel. unto the Gentiles, right. Israel, the disciples specifically, mm -hmm. you know, originally. Mm -hmm. For this purpose I have raised you up, and I may show my power in you, mm -hmm. and, that my, and that my name mm -hmm. may be declared in all the earth. earth. Now we see that this is a quote from the Old Testament, yeah. right. but Shaul is making it applicable to this particular situation. This is, and I brought this up only to say something that you always talk about, Elder. You talk yeah. about the name of Yah, yeah. how it is important. Yeah. That's why the name was important, yeah. so that when we were given the task of going out and teaching the Gentiles, yeah. when the Father poured out his spirit on the Gentiles, yeah. we had to give the name yeah. right. That's we right. We had to establish the name, name right. right. And yeah. that's why I wanted to bring that up, yeah. and I wanted to say that. Because, because they was hiding the name. Absolutely. Just like they had the name of Yahshua. So we had to establish the name Yahweh. Yahweh, and we had to establish it That's right. when we were given the task to go out well. and the command to go out from Yeshua to go out and give it to the nations. nations. So we had to have the name right. That's right. Oh, you better have it right. That's right. You, you better have <laughs> it right. right. Let them absolutely, know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that. And yeah. uh, huh, there, there's so much to talk about, and there's so many things that uh, that uh, I wanted to go over, and I know you wanted to go over. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, it's. It, I mean, you need a, a ten-hour show <laughs> yes, you to do. talk about these things. But, but uh, we'll finish. Uh, we we will uh, we get will to continue this. Uh, continue uh, much of what uh, we're trying to present uh, to the people the on the voice of our come. fathers in the days to come.